Secrets is my 10th novel. It's my 10th novel in 12 years. And I'm particularly excited about its publication because even though it is my 10th novel, the excitement of seeing my new book in the bookshops or in the supermarkets or online just doesn't diminish in the slightest. And I think an added thrill for me is my lovely, sparkly, brand new cover design, which I'm very pleased about, indeed. Um, in the days when I was a struggling unpublished author, I used to uh, work freelance as a picture researcher and choose other people's book covers and therefore became pretty opinionated about what I would and wouldn't have on my book were I ever to be published. And we all work very hard to bring out this new style and uh, I think it's lovely. I think it's really lovely. It's bright and it's colourful and I think it's a very positive thing in this sort of grim, dull time that we're living in at the moment to have a splash of colour. Well, Secrets, surprisingly, is about secrets and uh, secrets specifically that we choose to keep to ourselves or that we choose to share. Um, and it's very important for the characters in this book, the heroine, who's called Tess, and the hero, who's called Joe, both of whom have carried their own personal secrets around with them for many, many years. And it's a set of circumstances which brings these two characters together. And through developing their relationship, they see which secrets they can take away from themselves and feel lighter about life, and which secrets they're happy just to, to keep and bury. Research, I think, is the true perk of my career. I absolutely love it, and I completely indulge my own little whims and fancies by choosing subjects that I've always had a fascination with, and then I just go off before I start writing the book, and I explore these in great detail. So for this book, the hero is a bridge builder, so my reading material by my bedside was all about trusses and arches and spans and cantilever, etc. It was very interesting. But most importantly, it comes the metaphor of building bridges, um, which I, is, is an absolutely key theme in the book. I also set the book up in my spiritual homeland of the northeast of England, specifically in the quirky and enchanting seaside town of Saltburn by the Sea. I would imagine that this is possibly the first time in literature when a particularly romantic interlude happens in downtown Middlesbrough, or specifically on top of the Transporter Bridge. Um, and therefore, in the name of research, I spent quite a lot of time up in the northeast. And although I so don't have a head for heights, and in fact, I get quite bad vertigo, because I was going to make my characters walk over the Transporter Bridge which I hasten to add is 160 feet above the River Tees. I had to do that first. <laughs> I'm very proud of this novel, and I really hope as well that my readers will think that this is a, a good classic Freya North book. Hopefully it has all the ingredients that my readers will come to expect. Namely, it's a good modern romance. It's funny, it's quirky, it's also quite edgy and dark. But very importantly, it's feisty and it's sexy and it's got dreadful language here and there. <laughs> dreadful words, rude words. Um, and most importantly, it's got a good, charming, happy ever after and characters that I hope my readers will identify with and grow to really love like I did.